Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. It's been quite a while since we did a Terranium update and there is the upgrade and the snake has just been put into there just now. Now the reason it's taken so long is actually this is quite a bulky Terranium and it's taken me some time to get it set up and get it exactly how I wanted it and then get it into a position in the snake room. It takes up a lot of space but that's been done. We're going to have a look at the little guy, see how he's been doing in the previous terranium, how he's been eating, how he's been spending his time, and we're going to stick him into this new terranium, and I'll show you how I designed that and what new opportunities this guy has got to um, exhibit natural behaviour. So, let's get after it. Okay guys, here's the terranium upgrade for the hatchling. It's a much, much larger Exoterra uh, Terranium and I just want to show you the concept first this is a uh, this is a medium short and I'm actually going to use a medium tall so that um, uh, we do have some climbing opportunities even though this snake has not shown any inclination to climb I just want to show you the um, I guess subterranean part of the of the construction and show you the concept and it's easier to do that in this uh, shorter tub. So you can see that there's a false floor in here and the terranium doors still open. We can still gain access to the inside and of course the lid comes off. So this is the subterranean part that you will not be able to see that the snake has access to and let me zoom you in so I can show you what, exactly what I've done. Okay so inside the terranium is two little hides here which are hiding the entrance to the burrow system and these are just uh, hamster uh, toy tube things you can buy them in sections and join them all together uh, but I've put a false floor in here this portion of the floor here actually comes out to give us access to the inside now I've had to put some spaces in here to keep this portion of the pipework system in place. So the snake has access to either of these two tubes and it joins on in the middle underneath and gives the snake access to what is effectively a tub. And the tub I can get into and clean if I need to by removing the floor. So we just take the lid off the top. I can take that out. And I can actually pull the top out. So it's just a standard tub, basically the same size tub that I would keep uh, this size of snake in if it was in a tub and rack system and I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to put a hide in here and water I suspect that if I do do that the snake will go in there and it will never come out so um, leave that with me I'll uh, show you how that's going to work but basically uh, this tub just lifts out there's a hole there where the tube goes in that the snake has access to so the snake only really has access to this tube system through here the burrow system and this tub it doesn't have access to the rest of the underground system so it's just two tubes that join on in the middle and join on like that to the tub put the lid on the tub and the false floor can go back in like so and the two hides over the entrance to the burrow system so that's basically the concept as I have it right now and as I say I'm going to put this in a much taller terranium but it's easier to show you the concept in this shorter terranium so don't worry it will be taller and there will be plenty of climbing opportunities as well for the snake so it has a choice of going underground into the burrow system where it can stay if it wants to and I'll also give it the opportunity to climb even though it has not done so in the terranium that it's in right now. This is a much larger size terranium uh, so we'll have much more space 
and much more room to play with but I do want to make this setup a little bit more utilitarian so that I can get in and clean the snake easier. The other terrarium is very cluttered and it's very difficult to get in and change the water bowl and do any sort of cleaning so I do want to make this setup just that little bit more simple uh, but it will still have the same elements and the snake will have plenty of choice in what it wants to spend its time doing. Okay guys, so here is the much bigger terrarium with the underground system already installed. So we're picking up from where we left off with the build, but this is the full size terrarium now. And the tub is installed in the bottom. We've got the hides in the side, so now I'm going to build up the rest of the internals of the terrarium. Okay, so I've wedged in some trees there. The snake is not going to be able to knock those over. And what I've done for climbing opportunities, uh, because our ball python is not a particularly good climber, I've given it some wider, more ledge-shaped opportunities to climb. So it's a much broader base for the snake to climb on uh, so it doesn't fall off. So it may actually want to use these climbing opportunities a bit more than it did before. It has the two hides at the back with access to the underground system and I'm going to put another hide in the front just to clutter things up. I'm going to give it a much bigger water bowl and you can see immediately that we have full access to the water bowl much better than the old system and I've gone back to paper substrate to make it easier to clean so when I do clean this can all lift out and I can gain access to the bottom bit if the snake has gone in there and uh, has made a mess in the bottom part. Close that up. And the finishing touches to the system I have built a plastic shroud that goes completely around the terrarium so we enclose the back and the sides I have a roof because the last guy tried to escape out of the roof until I put a cover on uh, to stop him from probing under the roof so we've got a full enclosure and what I'm going to do for the subterranean part of this is to put a shroud over the front and I'll fasten this in place against the side here but you can now see what the terrarium is going to look like so this underground part in here is underground so it's going to be dark all the time I can put some lighting on if I want so you can see into the terrarium there. So that's what it looks like. I'm actually very happy with this. I did have a dry run before I set it up just to make sure that it would all go back together. And it has. So I'm quite happy with this. It's much, much larger than the other terrarium. So we're ready to actually put the snake in here. Now the downside of this terrarium is readily apparent. This thing is huge and it is heavy. And we're going to put a hatchling in here. It's taking up the space of two or three adult snakes in a rack system. Uh, and I'm struggling for somewhere to put it. But here it is. It's ready to go. Ready for the guy to go in. So let's take this away temporarily. And get out the other terrarium and take a look at the little fella in the terrarium that we're going to remove him from. Okay guys, so this is the old terrarium. The mini terrarium. Let me just take the 
paper off the top so that you can see inside. Remember we had to put the paper over the top of the terrarium when we first moved this guy in there uh, because he tried to escape by constantly trying to find a way out up at the top. The top of this terrarium is mesh so he could see out and it was his natural instinct to climb up there and try and probe for a gap to escape. Uh, so we put this paper over the top and that stopped him from doing that. So let's just take that off. So you can see into the terrarium uh, slightly better. And I'm going to zoom you in in a minute and we're going to dig this guy out. But um, I am going to break rule number one for keeping wall pythons. Rule number one, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. We are going to upgrade this guy when he's perfectly happy where he is. Not something that I would recommend you do. Uh, if you are keeping your snakes in small terrariums, wait until you get clear signals from your snake that it's ready to be upgraded. It'll be busting out at the seams and you will know when it's time to upgrade. So we're upgrading this guy early. Um, here's the little fella's feeding card. Let me just hold that up for you. And you can see that um, getting him to eat has not been a problem. This guy has been eating extremely regularly. His last meal was actually on the 21st of March, which is just six days ago. So getting him to eat, not an issue. Let me zoom you in and we'll talk a little bit about how this guy has been spending his time in this more naturalistic setup. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let me take this paper shroud off the bottom of the tank. Again, we put this over the terrarium so that the base of the tub, the base of the terrarium stayed quite dark uh, so that the snake could actually settle. But let's remove that. So that you can see in. Let me open it again so that you can see inside and the first thing that I'm going to say is I have enjoyed looking at this empty terrarium since the last video that I made and I say empty terrarium because Actually, when we dig the snake out this time to move him to the new terrarium, that will be the first time that either you or I have seen the full length of this snake uh, since we put him in there. For the first couple of days, he climbed up to the top here and was probing at the top of the lid to try to get out. But since that time, he has used none of the upper part of this terrarium. There's a sky hide in here, complete waste of time. There are branches for him to climb in here complete waste of time. He has used none of it. Let me zoom you in closer here and you'll see that there are two hides at the base of the terrarium down here. This is a smaller one at the front and a slightly larger one at the back and when he first went in there he was actually moving between the two hides and this hide has now got completely too small for him. He can't fit in there so we take that out and sure enough he's not in there. This guy has spent 99.99% of his time in there. He has not moved for months. Uh, at the start of the video, I showed you uh, some pictures of what he does at night. Let's talk a little bit about natural behavior. And my first comment would be that in captivity, you are never going to see natural behavior from a snake. The best you can hope for is the snake doing what it needs to do in order to be comfortable and to survive. You'll notice that my setups are very simplistic. I live in the tropics. My snake room is at 29 to 30 degrees centigrade, 86 to 88 Fahrenheit the whole time. I don't use heat mats. I don't use light sources. And my snakes live in their comfort zone all the time. When we talk about thermal regulation in snakes, that's a little bit of a misnomer in tropical snakes. Tropical snakes do not need to seek out the sun to warm up. The temperature is in their comfort zone day and night and does not vary. They are fully charged and energized at all times. And in fact, tropical snakes spend most of their time hiding and trying to stay out of the sun. You will never see them in the open sunning themselves. 
you will never see them out during the day. The best time to see tropical snakes is late in the evening as it's getting dark or at night. But at night it's obviously quite hard to see them. The tropics is hot and sweaty all the time. When we keep snakes in temperate climates there is nothing natural about having to supply heat through heat mats and through light sources. At the extremes of their natural ranges where temperatures at night drop a little bit you will find that these animals modify their behavior and they may have to come out in the morning to sun themselves to warm up but that is only at the extreme ends of their temperature range and if you keep these snakes in temperate climates you're going to have a heat mat or a heat source which of course the snake is going to gravitate towards it's going to move towards the heat to warm up and move away from the heat to cool down. My snakes do not do that. My snakes are at their preferred body temperature the whole time. They eat, they sleep, they digest and they breed at a constant temperature and that's exactly what tropical snakes tend to do. They will maintain a constant temperature usually by finding a shady sheltered spot and they don't move. They don't move unless they need to eat. Eat or finding a mate being the prime drivers. When you put heat mats or heat lamps into your terrariums to keep your snake warm because the rest of the terrarium is too cold, of course you can expect to see modified behaviours. Not natural behaviour but modified behaviours based on how you set up your terrarium. My snake does not need to move to thermal regulate. It's a constant comfortable temperature all the time. My snake has not budged an inch. It has stayed in its hide. It sticks its head out at night. It does recognize the difference between night and day. It sleeps all day and at night it sticks its head out of the hide and that's where I feed it. It accepts food every single time and every night all it does is stick its head out of the hide, assume an ambush position where it has been successful before and it waits. It waits all night long. In the morning it sticks its head back in the hide and goes straight back to sleep again. So this snake has used perhaps 5% of the available space in the terrarium and that's exactly what I would expect a small hatchling snake in the wild in the tropics to also do. I do not think that that behaviour is strange, I do not think that behaviour is unusual. I think that is doing what the snake needs to do to survive. It's a hatchling so it's going to hide. It won't expose itself unnecessarily. In the wild, in the tropics, you very rarely see a snake. In this terrarium, I very rarely see a snake. Nothing unusual in that. Now, I do not know where this snake has been coming out to poo and to shed because I never see it outside the hide. So when I lift this hide up, I'm going to be surprised at number one how much it's grown, how big this snake has got and we'll have a route around to see where this snake is actually moving around to pee, poo and shed. It's in there now, I don't see any pee or poo anywhere at all in the terrarium so I'm assuming it hasn't moved to do that either. When I lift off the top of the hide I'm going to find sheds in there. The snake has done everything it needs to do from inside that hide, about 2% of the terrarium's available space. So I'm going to add that this snake also behaves exactly the same as the rest of my snakes in tubs. There is absolutely no difference in activity levels between this snake in the terrarium and this snake in, in the tubs. I see more of the snakes in tubs than I've seen from this guy in the terrarium. This guy has been completely secretive but it's his choice. I have not forced him or uh, handled him. It's completely his choice what he does and his choice is to stay in that hide and not move an inch. So let's dig him out and we'll have a look at what this guy has actually been up to. Let's see how much growing he's done. Um, he is going to be a little bit nervous because I don't handle this snake. So let's start by removing some of this vegetation so that we can actually see what we're doing. And I have to say this terrarium is 
amazing it, it looks absolutely fantastic but um, the snake couldn't care less there's the water bowl which has been very difficult to access and I can now see around the hide and outside of that hide there is no shed and there is no poo so I'm assuming oh there he is sticking his head out look he's curious now you can see him sticking his head out of the hide let's get a look at this guy my goodness me he's quite big so there he is and yes I can see pee inside the hide so he has been peeing in there um, let's get him out put him in a tub and we'll have a look at him before I move him into the other terrarium so let me see if I can do this without getting bitten yes there's a shed in there as well I can see that there's a shed So here he is and you can see that he is not any more nervous than a snake in a tub would be. He's trying to get back into his terrarium. There he goes. So let's put him out, let's get him out because I want to actually show you this guy. So you can see that he is shed and there's dried poo in there, there's pee. He's done everything for the last few months from inside that hide he has not moved one inch all right guys so there he is uh, this guy hatched out in November so he's about four months old and here he is you'll see that he is let's just zoom in a little bit for you guys perfectly healthy nice little chunky hatchling he's not nervous from having been kept in a terrarium and not being handled at all uh, he is not flinching rearing back striking at me uh, these snakes tend to mellow out as they get a little bit older anyway So at four months, let me see if I can get a weight on him for you. Let me just zero the scales and pop him on the scales. So at four months, this guy is 200 and 257 grams. Let's bring him back into shot for you. In fact, I will pick him up for you. This is the first time that this snake has been picked up in months. And there you go, typical flight response. This guy is trying to get away, but he's not flinching or too nervous. He's not striking. Um, the snake has received no socialization whatsoever. And you can see that he is quite placid. Let me just put him down. So I treat him exactly the same way as I treat any of my other snakes. I move slowly and carefully around him and he responds in exactly the same way. As I said, this is the first time this snake has been handled in months. So for all you guys that think you need to socialize your snakes or that socializing them changes their demeanor, this guy is evidence that that is not the case. This guy has not been handled, but you would not know. As long as you're gentle with the snake, it's more about what you do than what the snake does. So now we're going to put this guy into his new terrarium and I think the next few days are going to be the most interesting part because this guy is going to be new to the terrarium, he's going to explore, he's going to try and escape and then he's going to find a nice little hidey hole. He's going to set up home there and he won't budge. That would be my prediction. Um, we've got a massive terrarium in there that's taking up a lot of space in the snake room. This guy is 250 grams and he's taking up the space of three adult snakes if they were in a rack. He's got a massive terrarium and I fully expect he's going to use none of it.
I've designed the terrarium with an underground burrow system so he can hide away if he wants to and I suspect I'm going to put this guy into the terrarium and we won't see him again. But he may prove me wrong. Alright so here it is installed in position. I've managed to squeeze it in there in the place where the old terrarium was but um, getting in get actually getting it into that space and getting it set up there was not an easy job it is extremely heavy fortunately this rack here is on wheels and pulls out to enable me to get that done it's not in an ideal location for cleaning and maintenance but i can get a stool to get up there and we will be able to monitor the snake so there you go that's the new terrarium in its new location Okay guys, so I'm going to open the terrarium here and introduce this guy to his new home. As I said, this is breaking all the ball python rules. This guy is not due for an upgrade, but I'm going to upgrade him anyway. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this snake. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But for the sake of this experiment, and to show you guys what these snakes do when given the opportunity, in he goes into his new terrarium and I do expect for the first couple of days that he is going to want to explore and climb. He's going to probe, press and try and find a way out of this terrarium. So I'll keep you posted as we go through this experiment. So in he goes. I'll release this video tonight so you guys are going to have to wait and see how this snake behaves. This is the front to the underground system and I can undo this tape here and peel this back so we will be able to see inside if the snake wants to go underground and that's where he wants to stay. So there we go, the experiment continues. It's been a huge disappointment for me. This snake behaves no differently to the snakes in tubs. The snakes in tubs I see every day. This guy I never see and he uses none of the opportunities that the terrarium gives him. He hides away in his hide and doesn't move. As long as he's receiving food, I get the impression that he's quite happy to stay in one spot for the next 20 years. But that's just me. So away he goes. He's already gone to the back of the terrarium and he's hiding in the vegetation as any normal ball python would. Let's see what he does over the next couple of days. This is going to be interesting. Okay, it's about midday, so this snake would have been asleep, as you saw when I hold him out of his terrarium, he would have been asleep. So I'm assuming that he's going to curl up and go to sleep and then explore later on tonight. So I'll take some video tonight, but you're going to have to wait for that. So there he is, in his new upgraded terrarium. Okay guys, I have to say that it has been a little bit disappointing for me with the terrarium. The terrarium itself has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed building them. I've really enjoyed setting them up and getting some awesome naturalistic setups and letting my imagination run wild as to what I think the snake would be happy with. And the snake couldn't care less. The disappointing part is that he's behaved in a terrarium exactly as the rest of my snakes have behaved in tubs. And I actually get to see my snakes in tubs more regularly than I get to see this guy in the terrarium. He spends all his time hiding. He does not come out and climb. He does not exercise. All he does is hide and eat. But, as I say, it has been interesting. It has been exciting for me to see how these snakes behave. And now this guy has got some new opportunities in the underground portion of the terrarium. So over the next few days we'll see how he gets on. Now while we're on the subject of snake behaviour, um, you've seen how this guy performs in the terrarium and we've had a look at him. I do allow my snakes in racks to come out and exercise if they show a desire to do so. Sometimes when I'm cleaning on a morning, most of my snakes are fast asleep, but every once in a while there'll be a snake that sticks his head out of the tub. And I do allow them on a consent basis to roam and exercise as they see fit while I continue cleaning. 
Note that that does not mean handling them. I've said this many times, snakes are not social animals. They do not like to be touched. But that does not mean that they cannot be enriched and you cannot give them exercise time. I just let them get on and do it by themselves. And I do have some videos of snakes doing that. That might be boring for many people, but it's snakes behaving in a completely relaxed manner. I am not touching them. They are roaming. And if you would like to see some footage of snakes doing that, I'm happy to show you those, those videos of what a relaxed snake looks like when you allow it to roam. So jump down in the comments and let me know if you would like to see that footage and I'll give you guys a brief update, maybe a video short in the next couple of days, just to show you what he's been up to in the first few days in this terrarium. This terrarium is huge. He weighs 250 grams, he's got a lot of growing to do, and he'll be happy in this terrarium from now until almost forever, at least a year, until he outgrows this terrarium. But I'm hoping the experiment doesn't take that long. I'm hoping that we'll be able to see some behaviours uh, so that you guys can make up your own minds about how these snakes prefer to live and what sort of setups they prefer. So stay tuned, I'll get back to you in the next couple of days and we'll do a brief update on what this guy has been up to. Jump down in the comments below because I know this is quite an emotional or emotive topic for many people. Uh, there are many people that are pro racks and there are many people that are pro terraniums. So this is an opportunity to compare and let the snakes decide. Jump down in the comments below if you've got any observations. Uh, you would like to see me do something different with this snake that will perhaps convince you one way or the other. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.